Ah, Velius, we would not have had this sumptuous feast laid out before us if you had not persuaded your brother Fugalius to provide much of this food from his farm. Though expensive of ritualistic fare, it is of the finest temple quality in all of Capua. Can you too provide us with a shadowy tale to tell, considering you are the Guetes priest of Hecate, the goddess of Goetia? I can indeed provide you all with many a shadow tale to tell about Hecate, Trimalchio. But first I would like to beg your indulgence in my telling of how I became a Goetes priest of Hecate. I, Vilius Bonatus, in bygone days, had once dwelled upon my elder brother's farm, which came into his hands when my brother was rewarded land by the tribune he had served as a centurion. Upon returning back from campaigning in conflict ridden Dudia, he went about bending my ear, relentlessly telling me, of all the occupations by which gain is secured, none is better than agriculture, none more profitable, none more delightful, none more becoming to a free man. My brother can be such a bore at times. He still ardently believes country life is the teacher of economy, of industry, and of justice. And so, when young, I was roped into my brother's business enterprise. This was long before the farm became the sprawling Latifundium success story it is now, having a vineyard, followed by an irrigated garden, a willow plantation, olive orchard, a meadow, grain land, a forest providing wood, a vineyard trained on trees, and lastly acorn woodlands. My brother had further acquired from a bothersome neighbor who decided to part himself from his land when persuaded to do so by my brother's brutish legionary friends. At first, the farm was but a small holding overlooked by a dilapidated villa, surrounded by a few fields, his tribune offloaded onto him, believing a skinwalker witch, wearing the hides of her victims had cursed the land, with her circular spells appearing among the flattened crops, whose haunted soil I toiled alongside my brother. One eve, long ago, as I flung wide the shutters to vanquish the foul airs from my brother's rear, a sight caught my eye a luminous flame akin to a soaring torch alighted in the heavens. No mere star was this. As the night wore on and I roused from slumber, that very torch still danced in the misty distance, drawing near as I beheld it, which was my first encounter with something otherworldly. Startled, I slammed the shutters, awakening my flatulent brother, who, agape and trembling, spoke of the Nymphia Vernales, the Greeks called Lampads, the salacious Strix companions of Hecate, who, wielding their torches of lustful Diana Lucifera, accompany Hecate in nocturnal journeys of haunting the sky in her phantom ships. My brother warned against gazing upon the seducing light, for the Diana Lucifera torches of the Nymphaea Vernales possessed the Hecate power to drive men into madness, or guiding travelers towards their demise. Which lights, he called them, tricksters to some, benefactors to those favored. His tales aside, I became hypnotized by the probing rays flickering through the shutters before the light departed. Another night toiling in the fields, my brother and I witnessed the bright Nymphaea Vernale's torch anew. Hovering above, it soon glided away. My brother, seized by terror, fled to the villa, leaving me to venture forth. As I approached, the floating Nymphaea Vernale's torch darted, swifter than any steed, to the field's far end. Repeated this game, it did, a score of times. Disheartened with this second encounter, I returned, though hearing the buzzing of bees as well as sensing a heat emanating from the Diana Lucifera flame of the floating Hecate torch, which lingered of a Nymphaea Vernale's circular dance before vanishing, as if extinguished or shyly eluding my gaze, though leaving behind an impression of a magic circle in the field. Alone the next night at the selfsame spot, a crimson Nymphaea Vernale's torch descended with alarming haste, was the top of me ere I could react. Hovering, its illumination obscured my own fire, transforming into a fiery shield on three legs. As it settled upon the ground, I fled to my fire, this Hecate apparition swiftly extinguished. Then, racing to the villa, I was accosted by a small girl looking like an infernal nymph, wearing strange gray attire. I repelled this third encounter with the occult, 
sure in the thought she was one of the Nymphae of her nails. Then more underworld nymphs appeared, clad in the self-same snug, striped clothing hugging every contour of their petite bodies, revealing far more than what was concealed, though their witch faces were obscured by the Minerva-like helmets they wore. But, as for their piercing almond-shaped eyes I could see, looking to be the color of the cloudless summer sky, peered at me behind round crystal lenses set in their helmets, which made them look like owls. As the owl-eyed nymphs carried me aloft into an abducting fourth encounter, I spied three horns protruding from their Minerva helmets, curving behind into their gray garments, I thought would deftly restrict their movements, but I was mistaken. I too noticed red badges adorning their pert breasts, reflecting starlight akin to mirroring coins depicting the Greek letter Sigma, making me notice their aroused nipples. Their boots, I too observed had peculiarly thick soles, which seemed to have impeded fluid movement, for they seemed to be walking stiffly as if on tiptoe. Yet, despite this, their agile gait prevailed. The nymphs seemed oddly equipped, who, though small of childlike stature, lifted me with ease, as I found myself being dragged up a ladder into an elusive doorway having the same shape as their little vesica Pisces love cracks, which was the only crease in their tight clothing. Drawn within, I was taken, finding myself in a small womb-shaped chamber ablaze like noon, its smooth metallic walls aglow. Another uterine opening led into an adjacent room of a womb, wherein a peculiar table of an altar was centered, surrounded by mushroom-looking stools, all fashioned from silvery white metal, one-legged with hinges permitting movement in all the four directions. The communication of the Nymphaea Vernales was devoid of any human familiarity sounding like that of wild animals, which greatly unnerved me. Despite my protests, the infernal nymphs undressed me with a strange politeness, an ordeal that caused minimal harm. My nakedness was then anointed with a clear liquid by their more than attentive small hands, I observed were no different than our own, their caressing which hands purposefully made my prick arise, and then, when seeing that my member was throbbing erect, I was quickly guided towards another womb-shaped room marked with cryptic red inscriptions. Alone within the room, I resigned myself to sitting on a legless gray bed, which was its only furniture. As I did so, smoke billowed around me. Nausea and suffocation assailed my body until I purged. Then entered my fifth encounter with a naked woman who came into the room. She was small of stature like her nymphae of her nail sisters having ethereal looks. She had, what appeared to be blonde braided hair, resembling lime-drenched strands of the Celt, whose sphinx-like eyes, high cheekbones, and a slender frame flooded my brain with her sublime nymph form, whose nether region pubic hair was blood-red. Her intimate advances sparked a deep fervor within me, she then indulged herself in the most intimate of acts upon my more than willing flesh until her departure. The intent of the Nymphaea Vernales was to use me as a mere stud, whose sister milked my harvested balls to enhance her infernal sisterhood breed of Hecate. Though highly enjoyable, the animalistic growls of the infernal nymph, when coupling, did concern me, who avoided kissing my lips, apart from biting my chin, and later pointing to her womb, and then gesturing towards the direction of the southern sky, where the eye of Lupus brightly glowed. I sensed within my mind that she was telling me where our daughter will be born, who would one night visit me as did her nymphae of her nail mother, to sire yet another witch daughter of Hecate. Returning my garments, the nymphae of her nails led me through their phantom ship before allowing me to depart back to my brother's farm. Then their ghostly ship lit up as a torch of Diana Lucifera and rapidly ascended, flying towards an unknown southerly land, where it vanished beyond sight beneath the earth and under deepest sea. Soon thereafter I left my brother's growing farm to have started up my own business as a Goatee's priest of Hecate, establishing a temple in Capua with what my brother provided of finances, wherein I teach my followers about the close encounter protocols of the fifth kind conjuring of the Nymphae of Ernales, the illuminating Diana Lucifera torch bearers of Hecate whose phantom ships sounding like bees make one's thoughts turn towards the southern star of lupus. Now, 
As the Goatee's priest of Hecate, I would like to relate to you all here gathered, should you have ears pricked up and open of interest, to hear about Hecate's close encounter five protocols, describing how to go about conjuring her Nymphaea Vernails. Please forgive me should I sound rather pompous when revealing the conjuring protocols of Hecate, but it is in keeping with my priest's craft when telling how to conjure the Nymphaea Vernails, with whom to experience most intimate contact. I usually charge a hefty pimp price for, of telling. But first to clear my throat, and to begin. <coughs> Seek ye first a quiet haven, away from the clamor of the world, be it within walls or under the vastness of the heavens. There, perchance upon a cushioned seat or upon a resting couch, or even in the posture of meditation, find thy repose. Close thine eyes, and with measured breaths, release the tension from every muscle, inviting relaxation to envelop thy being. Let fleeting thoughts pass like clouds, either clinging nor entertaining. Scratch any itches that dare disturb thy peace. Picture thyself seated, not in the flesh, but a shadowy form. Beseech the cosmos for absolution from transgressions, craving restoration, a return to purity. Witness the departure of all that is dark and heavy from thy essence. From the core of thy being, envision an infusion of Diana Lucifera's resplendent, tender luminosity, growing in brilliance. Encompass thyself in an egg-shaped shield of Diana Lucifera's light suffused with her loving radiance, impervious to negativity. Fix thy thoughts on beloved kin, merry creatures, moments of joy and laughter. Attend to thy breath, inhaling and exhaling, envisioning a descent within, as if seated in a bucket plunging deeper into a well of serenity. As the mind gradually stills, continue to perceive thyself as a creature of love and light, emitting from within, saturating thy entire existence, projecting outward like an infernal radiant beacon aimed skyward. Through thy inner voice, articulate unto the universe through this luminous conduit, the earnest desire, I seek amiable communion with the salacious witch daughters of Hecate, the Nymphaea Vernales, benevolent and of infernal and cosmic essence. Repeat this invocation, employing the luminous beam of Diana Lucifera as thy messenger. Visualize thy place amidst the vast cosmos, the spiraling of stars, our sun and moon, our earth, thy land, thy nation, thy city and thy dwelling. Immerse thyself in this cosmic cartography, encompassing both day and night, a panorama of an earthly vista. Be meticulous in thy visualization. At the appointed juncture, unseal thine eyes. The close encounter five protocol of Hecate hath been observed. Occasional remembrance of the luminous love of Diana Lucifera residing within thee, as well as her celestial conduit, is advised. Fear not. Look upon the firmament and await the Nymphaea Vernales' close encounter with the impatience, for the Nymphaea Vernales may tarry, perhaps for many nights, until Hecate bids her lustful witch daughters to manifest before the around the moon phases, encircling the zodiac of a magic crop circle, amidst which thee is seated, awaiting an encounter with Hecate's occult nymphs of the Goetia. <laughs>